All right, everyone, this is going to be our best compact pistols list. Now, we want to point out that this is a list that Wyatt and I came up with. You may not agree with it, or you may have some ones that you love in here. Yeah, as always, we try to keep the list a little bit short. Could probably fit a ton of great handguns in there, but if there's something you missed, just let us know at the end of the video in the comments below. Yeah, philosophy of use. Philosophy of use. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna start off with the SIG P365X Macro Comp. Now, Johnny and I attended the release of this and uh, got to spend a lot of time shooting this gun and really appreciated it. The P365 is an absolutely solid pistol, pretty well proven reliability at this point, good accuracy. I love the ergonomics because I feel like uh, it fits a wide range of hand sizes. And when they added the comp on there, it just made it that much more controllable and uh, especially when you wanna run it fast. Wyatt, what are your thoughts on this one? So I actually was not really big when I first saw them. I was like, ah, I don't know about the integrated comp, but then I shot this one. Yeah. Um, and I was like, man, that gun shoots really flat. I reviewed the slow-mo footage. It was absolutely uh, amazing how uh, fast this gun cycled and how flat it was. Right. And for me, the big thing is this gun, it's, it's only an inch wide, but it holds 17 rounds and yeah. it's not that big of a gun. The capacity is just, there's nothing that matches this capacity at this size, period. Right. Yeah, it's a tough act to follow. All right, next up is the Walther PDP Compact. This is the four inch version with the compact size grip. So you got 15 plus one capacity. And uh, I can't say enough good about the Walther PDP. It's a gun that I've had a few years of experience with now. And I love just about everything about it. The trigger, the ergonomics are outstanding. Uh, if I got to knock it, the one thing that I got to mention is because of my hands and my high grip, I often don't get a uh, lock back on that last round. But, you know, uh, that's something that I can work around. Yeah, just speaking on the lock back real quick, that is really common for people with big hands. But on the flip side, it's really easy to hit, which yeah. I do like. Yep. So when you want to drop the slide, it's right there. Uh, like Sean said, this thing has amazing ergonomics, a great trigger. And one of the things about this, I get insane accuracy out of this gun. When yep. I'm doing slow fire with the red dot, I can hold three inch group at 25 yards, which is, the gun's quite capable of way more than that. You know, if I can squeeze that out of this gun, you know, you're gonna have a really great time with something like this. And between us, we have five PDPs and you probably have like a trillion rounds to them, but <laughs> yeah. I've had great reliability. They're just awesome guns, especially for around 550 bucks. So. Right. Right, next up is going to be the Staccato CS. Now, another great smaller version of the famous Staccato 2011. We attended the release event with this one here in Staccato uh, in Georgetown uh, up in Texas and love this gun. It's again, like I said, a lot of the attributes that you appreciate about the P, but in a more compact version. And, you know, you reach a tipping point when you get to smaller guns, right? They're easier to conceal, but do you really want to fight with them? Do you really want to defend yourself with them? And, and this one absolutely hits the mark for me. Like you mentioned, you get a lot of the performance of a larger gun in a smaller package. I have a Staccato C2, which is another gun that could have made this list. Absolutely. But the CS wins out because the C2 still has kind of that real chunky 2011 grip. And even though it's a compact pistol, it still feels a little bit closer to a full-size pistol when you have it on your hip right. or you have it inside your waistband, whereas the CS feels like a real concealed carry pistol. I don't feel like I'm compromising too much performance, but I'm getting a good size decrease. Uh, the only really big downside I have about the CS is that it is a lot more expensive than even the C2. Oh, yeah. You're coming in at three, four hundred dollars more than something like that, but they all do come optics ready, which is really nice. Uh, but this is a great gun if you want to squeeze the most performance you can get in a small package. Sure, still a very potent option to put in your pants. <laughs> Fourth on our list is the Breda PX4 Storm. I did not have this on my bingo card for comeback gun of the year in 2023. But a lot of y'all mentioned this in some of the comments on our other videos. Well, good news is I had one, dug her up out of there. Um, I love these guns. One of the main things about the PX4 that makes this so much different is it actually has a rotating barrel here. And you can see when I pull it back that the barrel doesn't tilt up, it rotates. And that kills a lot of the recoil. It keeps the gun from flipping up too much when the barrel's locking up like on a normal Browning locking system gun. And on top of that, the PX4 is just absurdly reliable. A lot of y'all have seen some of the videos from some of the other YouTubers out there talking about this. People are going 20, 30,000 rounds without mm. failures with these guns. They were built for that. 
Uh, there's a lot of modularity built into the gun with the trigger. You can swap out the side plates for decockers, different safety models. Um, I put a Langdon trigger in here, and this is just a really excellent, low recoiling, ridiculously reliable carry piece from Breda, and I'm glad that they're popular again. <laughs> All right, last but not least is the SIG P229 Legion. I threw this one on the list especially because this gun has been one of the most consistent solid performers for me personally. They come with a Grey Guns trigger, which is an excellent DASA trigger with a really short reset, 15 plus one capacity, a little bit low compared to modern standards. You know, the bore axis might be a little bit high. You know, it's got some great x-ray sights and you look at it, you're like, hey, it's just, you know, another steel frame nine millimeter pistol, but I get really good accuracy. I've had 100% reliability out of this gun. I've had zero failures with multiple defense ammos, all sorts of FMJ. And even though the gun may not feel the best in the hand, it still feels really good to me with a lot of the Legion grip cuts and some of the extended beaver tail there, but it just, everything comes together when I'm shooting it. Nice. So for me, I have not tried this firearm yet, but I'm encouraged by the fact that it is a Legion. I can feel that it's uh, pretty weighty, which is gonna be helpful for a smaller sized weapon. It, it reminds me in a lot of ways of the P226. It's obviously not the P226, but a lot of the same characteristics in a uh, more condensed version. We're gonna give you our final thoughts on the best compact pistols, but before we do, we wanna remind you one more time, please hit that like and subscribe button. Make sure you let YouTube know that you dig our content. Final thoughts on the best compact pistols list. Now, we're going to start out back with the uh, X Macro from Sig Sauer. Man, every time I shoot this gun, I'm reminded just how flat it shoots. Now, we run into that paradigm where you have a small compact pistol, it's typically more flippy, right? Because you have physics that you have to deal with the explosion, the smaller mass, and so you get that extra flip, but the comp really works. Yeah, and there's something about how fast the slide cycles for me and the way that the grip angle sits in my hands. When the slide comes forward, it just comes right back down at the yeah. exact spot where it needs to be. I can shoot this, I dare say, faster than anything else on this list, maybe pretty close to some of the other ones. And the capacity is killer. Yeah. 17 rounds, you can't beat it. Now, moving on to the Walther PDP, uh, it, when I compare this with some of the other guns, I find it lower on the list for me as far as performance, but still a top tier firearm. It's really good. Yeah, as far as striker triggers go, yeah. you're gonna have a really hard time beating it. That does beat out the X macro by far in the trigger. Right. And for a lot of people, especially with larger hands, they might find the ergonomics uh, better. And even if with smaller hands, some people just like a little bit more texture and a little bit uh, wider circumference around the grip. Uh, the accuracy is really there. Uh, the bore axis is a little bit higher, so I can't shoot it quite as fast as some of the other guns, you know, with that right. have comps or lower bore axis, but it's still really reliable with a great trigger and has excellent accuracy. And that Staccato CS, uh, again, you know, <laughs> this is a daily carry for me, so it's something that I'm very confident with. And, uh, but pulling it out and just running it hard and fast on that steel, man, it, it really holds still. Just the engineering in itself, the way it works, the grip and uh, everything else coming together, especially with the trigger too. Yeah, the trigger is really what lends itself well to fast shooting on this. And like you said, a lot of the fitment, but that's what you're paying for. It is the most expensive gun on this list by far, probably double the price of the next yeah. thing. Yep. Um, which is why I don't every day carry one because they're really expensive. <laughs> but man, it is fast, it's slick, it looks good, it feels good. The reliability is there. We were shooting with the hollow points on there and it's just running those as fast as you can feed it. Yeah, it gobbles them right up. Well, I'm moving over to the Beretta. Why don't you kick us off with this one and give us your thoughts? The things I really like about this gun is that rotating barrel really cuts down a lot of the recoil for something that looks like it has a higher bore axis, but it just really soaks up a lot of the recoil. You don't get as much muzzle flip. Totally different recoil impulse than any of the other guns on the table here. And I, I do have the Langdon tactical trigger upgrade in here, which makes it a really great uh, double action, single action trigger. The stock trigger is still good, but man, this gun is just very accurate because of the lockup with that rotating barrel and the reliability is just absolutely insane. You have that constant feed angle, the barrel's not doing all sorts of crazy moving up and down or anything. And it just, 
it just flat out runs and mm -hmm. once you get a hang of it you can shoot it fast too yeah i was gonna say that's a that's a great point because uh i didn't run it nearly as fast as you i'm not a big fan of double action single action we had that discussion probably food for a podcast or maybe even yeah. another video at some point in the future but uh watching you run that fire it was really cool i can admit that uh in my experience the recoil impulse was pretty tame. I mean, uh, without a comp, that rotating barrel does make a difference. So it was pretty interesting. Yeah, especially on the hot hollow point ammo again, like yeah. we're shooting defensive ammo. And then finally, we've got the uh, SIG P229 Legion. What are your thoughts on that one? So this is another gun that's kind of greater than the sum of its parts for me. It does have a really great double action, single action trigger. The Legion upgrades include the extended beaver tail, yep. some of the undercut that make some of that SIG, that normal SIG blockiness go away with the Legion. Comes with the night sight standards. You can get optics ready versions of this as well. You get really good accuracy. The recoil impulse is pleasant, even though it's got a little bit of a higher bore axis. Yep. But everything about it's easy to use. It draws great. You have plenty of slide perches to get on and rack out there. 15 plus one, it still puts it right in line with yep. most of these things, except for like the macro. Right. Um, and the CS has got one more, but it's just a really solid all around pistol that doesn't do anything exceedingly outstanding, except for maybe that gray guns trigger. But when you put the whole package together, it's just there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I had not fired that one previous to this video and I really enjoyed it. Uh, again, with my big hand size, I like that big beaver tail uh, covering me there and not having to worry about slide bite. And the trigger was good, so I was impressed with it overall. All right, that's gonna do it for our best compact pistols list. Now, we wanna fully recognize that uh, this is our list. Why didn't I came up with this? You may not agree, or you may love some of these picks. Head down in the comments below, light us up, let us know what you think, and we'll catch you on the next one.